Hello students. In the previous class, I have shared the basics, like common basic, you know, like how a tissue is formed, how an organ is formed, an organ system, then how an organism is formed as a whole. So keeping that in mind, we shall proceed to our today's class. See, there are two organ systems which are completely dependent on one another and work closely together. What is the purpose? Their purpose is to support our various activities like standing, sitting, walking, etc. Now what are these organ systems? They are the skeletal system and the muscular system. In today's class, we shall focus on the skeletal system. Okay. We have all seen buildings, houses, you know, these are the common structures you see in your daily life. If you have observed, you will see their framework is made up of wood, brick, it consists of metals, etc. Similarly, the skeleton system consists of different types of bones. And this framework is called the skeleton. The human skeleton is made up of total 206 bones. I repeat, the human skeleton is made up of total 206 bones. Now what is the purpose of having a skeleton? Why, why, why do we have this system in us? Or what is the function of the skeleton system? The skeleton system provides shape. It gives support to our body. Then it helps in the movement. You know various movement. You sit, you stand, you walk. Who is maintaining your body posture? It is our skeleton system and it also provides protection to the soft internal organs present inside our body. Now we will learn the major bones of our human body. See bones are made up of calcium and phosphorus. What do these minerals help in? Calcium and phosphorus add strength and hardness to the bones. There are different types of bones in our skeleton system. The skull, backbone, rib cage, jaw bone and bones of the limbs and girdles are the major bones of our skeleton system. Now let us slowly learn about each of them. Now we shall learn about the skull. See, the skull is made up of flat bones. It includes the bones of our head, face and jaws. I repeat, the skull includes the bones of our head, face and jaw. See, upper jaw and the lower jaw. This is the lower jaw. These bones are very closely joined to each other. All the bones of the skull except the lower jaw is fixed. See, you can move it. You can move only your lower jaw, not any other joints of your face or your head. Only the lower jaw is movable. So, the human skull consists of 22 bones. 8 bones form the part of your skull and 14 bones form the face. Now, let's come to backbone or spine or vertebral column. See, our vertebral column is made up of 33 small bones. They are made up of 33 small bones. Now each bones have their own name. Like the first one is named that class. You will gradually learn the names in your higher classes. But for the timing remember these small bones are called vertebrae and individual bone is called vertebra. I repeat the small bones of the vertebral column together are called the vertebrae and individually they are called vertebra. It's like the singular and the plural term. Now, and uh, the, what is the purpose of having a backbone? What is its function? Backbone protects the spinal cord and it also protects the nerve and blood vessels that run down from the brain. I repeat, the function of backbone is it protects the spinal cord and it protects the nerves 
and blood vessels that run down from the brain so it acts as a shield protecting the blood vessels running now let us learn about the rib cage ribs are thin curved bones that form a structure which is called the rib cage i said ribs are thin curved bones that form a structure called the rib cage and we know inside the rib cage we have the two uh, soft internal organs namely the heart and lungs so the rib cage is protecting them we have 12 pairs of ribs and they are joined to the backbone and also to the breastbone which is called sternum which is present in front the last two pairs are called the the last two pairs of the ribs are called the floating ribs why because they are joined only to the backbone i repeat the last two pairs of the ribs are called the floating ribs because they are joined to the backbone next is limbs now we have two pairs of limbs the fore limbs and the hind limbs the fore limbs mainly are hand and the hind limbs are legs okay now fore limb consist of bones of the upper arm lower arm and finger i repeat the fore limb consist of bones of the upper arm the lower arm and our fingers whereas and oh and what is its function its function is to pick and carry things its function is to pick and carry things whereas hind limb consist of the bones of the upper leg upper leg means above your knee upper leg lower leg below your knee and your toes function its function is to help us to walk and run i repeat we have two pairs of limbs the fore limbs and the hind limbs the fore limbs referring to our hands hind limb referring to our legs so fore limb consists of the bones of the upper arm the lower arm and the fingers their function is to pick up things and carry whereas hind limb consists of the bones of the upper leg above your knee lower leg below your knee and your toes and what is its function its function is to help us in walking and running now we will learn about girdles girdle is a ring like bony structure i repeat girdle is a ring like bony structure and we have two girdles namely the pectoral girdle or commonly called as the shoulder girdle and the pelvic girdle that is the hip girdle shoulder girdle consists of the shoulder blade and the collarbone the shoulder blade and the collarbone whereas hip girdle consists of three large flat bones joined together i repeat girdle is a ring like bony structure we have two girdles namely the pectoral girdle commonly called the shoulder girdle and the pelvic girdle which is commonly called the hip girdle the shoulder girdle consists of the shoulder blade and collarbone whereas the hip girdle consists of three large flat bones joined together next we'll come to the jaw bone the lower jaw is the largest is the largest and strongest bone in the human face the lower jaw is the only movable bone of the face you have i have told told you regarding this that the lower jaw is the only movable jaw of your face this allows us to chew the food and also to talk now we will sum up the function and the importance of bones see the bones give shape and support to our body like i said it is forming the framework of our body they protect our internal organs then bones allow the movement of different parts of our body and most importantly bone is made up of a jelly substance which is called bone marrow what is the function of this bone marrow this is the site or this is the place where blood cells are formed i repeat bones are filled up with a jelly substance which is called the bone marrow the function of bone marrow is bone marrow serves as the site where blood cells are formed see we have 
observed the framework of buildings what we have seen that the structure is very rigid and it cannot be moved but like unlike the framework of a building which is rigid and cannot move the framework of our body can be moved how is it possible it is possible because of joints now what is a joint a joint is a place where two bones meet i repeat a joint is a place where two bones meet now joint are of two types they are movable and immovable now let us look into its difference immovable joints joints that do not allow any movement <coughs> you basically cannot move there is uh, the immovable joint supports no form of movement they are rigid like bones of our skull can you move the bones of your skull it cannot be moved so this is an example of an immovable joint now uh, of your skull except that of the lower jaw so your lower jaw is an exception of immovable joint lower jaw is the only bone or only joint present in your skull which is capable to which is capable of moving next movable joint joints that allow movements now depending on the kind of movement there are four types of movable joint like pivot joint ball and socket joint hinge joint and gliding joint i repeat depending on the types of the depending on the movable joint there are four different types like movable joints are of four different type which includes the pivot joint ball and socket joint hinge joint and gliding joint now we will look into it let us now learn about pivot joint see pivot joint helps us to move our head from side to side so you can look towards your right towards your left you know you can move your head from side to side it is because of the pivot joint that we have in us so this joint what is its location this joint is seen between the first and the second vertebrae i repeat pivot joint is seen between the first and the second vertebrae and it allows our head to move from side to side up and down next is the ball and socket joint ball and socket joint is seen in the bones of hip and shoulder okay i repeat ball and socket joint is seen in between the bones of hip and shoulder for example while you are throwing the ball of your cricket you roll this is possible because of the ball and socket joint that we have next is the hinge joint hinge joint is exactly like the door of your house it allows the movement of only one side okay now for example your elbows and knee you can move your elbow only in one direction can you move it in other direction you cannot okay so this is your hinge joint which is allowing the movement only in one direction next is the gliding joint gliding joint is present in your wrist which allows your gliding movement this is the gliding movement so what is the importance of joints the bones of the skeleton move with the help of joint okay so joint makes our body flexible allowing different types of movement i repeat joints make our body flexible allowing different types of movement